When it comes to supercar manufacturing, the French have Bugatti. The Italians boast Lamborghini and Ferrari. But right here in Nigeria, we proudly have Benny. 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 your experience in building cars, where did the bulk of the knowledge come from? Kind of self-taught. Um, I learned most of the things I learned online. Um, there are lots of information. I was always Googling, mm. printing diagrams, pictures, watching YouTube, mm. trying to understand the uh, operation patterns mm. of all these machines. This is Nigeria, and right behind me is a brand that proves that Africans are capable of doing great things. Why supercars? Why not just say, okay, I'm stopping at normal everyday automobile, but why supercars? I understood that the sports cars, the luxury cars, the supercars, Formula Ones were like the most difficult form of automotives. Mm. Those were the aspects where you had tight conditions to work with. Mm. So your ability to understand all those ones and work with them rightly you would um, easily produce the day-to-day -day cars. Mm. His name is Jerry Malo, and without an engineering degree, he has built Nigeria's first sport car. Most times, Africans import luxury cars that do not fit our topography. So it takes an African to solve Africans' problem. And that is what Benny is doing. The basic is to see that we make affordable and available vehicles designed for the African environment. When you were growing up, what did you see yourself being? I think since I was five, I always saw myself walking around cars. Um, really? Yes, um, being a team lead in a car manufacturing company. Um, I, I, I can't really put memories together, but I remember growing up in the village, we used uh, off-cuts from roofing sheets to make toy cars. Mm. We used sticks and other things. And I always wanted mine to be the finest, to mm. be the best amongst my peer group. Um, it wasn't all about just making a toy car. Uh, it was being the best amongst the rest. And um, we used um, sleepers to cut the tires. Yeah. And while my friends would be using knife, razor blade to cut the tire, and it doesn't come out to perfection. Yeah. I would steal my father's torch. Mm. Those old type of torches uh, mm. and the tiger head. I would yes, yes, that's stainless one. Yeah. Okay. I would remove the head, put it on fire. When it's red hot, I would press it on my new what? sleepers. So I get those tires to perfection. Uh, it has some kind of lines, the white, yes, blue, yes, green. Yes, yes, I wanted those lines to come out clean. Uh, and I, I just always wanted my cars to be the finest. Even if I was taking my bath and I had the sound of any car passing, I would want to run out to, just to see the car. What? So I, I knew that there was much interest about vehicles since that young age. And I kept growing and developing the interest more around it. I was fortunate to go to a primary school where the science teacher gave me, noticed my interest and mm. gave me more attention around it. He was buying toy cars for me to dismantle. He was um, getting me more videos and content that would develop my growth towards that. Mm. I think in primary three, I was making toy cars with wire remote controls mm. already. Uh, in, in GS3, I built the first drivable car that I was able to sit down and drive on. So wow. that's where it started from. Your experience in building cars, where did the bulk of the knowledge come from? Is it, would you say it was through the four walls of education? Nah. Or would you acquire most of those knowledge on your own? No, nah, I, 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 I'm kind of self-taught. Um, I learned most of the things I learned online. Um, there are lots of information. I was always Googling, mm. printing diagrams, pictures, watching YouTube, mm. trying to understand the uh, operation patterns mm. of all these machines. So from uh, the, the idea was, how do a car operate from inserting the key, twisting it? What happens in that Kickstarter? What do the key touch? Mm. What electricity flows to the Kickstarter? to the crankshaft, to all that. So I just needed to understand all those basics. 
So I was always watching animations on YouTube as a kid. And um, when I watch a lot of them, I would want to come and see them physically. So mm -hmm. I was going to roadside mechanics. I was watching them dismantle cars. I was seeing the parts and I was making reference to them to what I had watched online. So it started from there to the point where I said, um, I need to make yeah. one. I don't want to keep assuming that I understand and I can do it. I need to make one. So I tried to do something very little with a grinding machine mm -hmm. engine. So um, I just welded the chassis, the body parts together, mounted um, the grinding machine and attached it with a motorcycle gearbox wow. uh, with the wheel barrel tires and the steady connection. And I saw that, yes, it was working. So mm -hmm. that gave me a better motivation to, okay, let me do something better. I need to try and see what I could do better mm. and so on. I kept growing. But you know what, what I'm curious about is many people, you know, if they want to venture into automobile, um, you know, manufacturing, they will start with normal automobile that people use on a day to day basis. Mm. But for you, you didn't go with the simple one, which is the simple, the everyday automobile. You went with supercars. Why supercars? Why not just say, okay, I'm stopping at normal everyday automobile, but why supercars? So, um, there's a lot of plans to build day-to-day -day cars. Okay. There's a lot of plans to build buses, tricycles, um, SUVs, and a couple of others. But um, during my studies, um, I understood that the sports cars, the luxury cars, the supercars, Formula Ones were like the most difficult form of automotives. Mm. Those were the aspects where you had tight conditions to work with. Mm -hmm. So your ability to understand all those ones and work with them rightly, you would um, easily produce the day-to-day -day cars. Mm -hmm. So that's where I chunked um, a lot of uh, energy towards. Now, another factor was you have university, a lot of university graduates within Nigeria. If the target is to have manufacturing companies in large scales here in Nigeria, who are going to be the designers, who will be the engineers and who mm. and so on in the, in the company. So I also saw it as a teaching training ground for mm. other young people who are university graduates and want to understand the basics of car manufacturing. Mm. So as we're doing our team, doing the prototyping and research development, we're also taking students on intern mm. and teaching them ABC so they could learn D, E, F on their own. And supercars, sports cars are um, the, some of the difficult aspect of automobile. So mm -hmm. if they, we believe that as they are able to understand that when we get to the stage where we are producing day-to-day -day cars, it becomes an easy tax for them. What is the biggest challenge you've had, you know, in building these vehicles? Access to finance. Um, has been the first, the major, and maybe the next access to information, to knowledge, and to the know-how on how to achieve it. There are limited um, libraries, limited study facilities, limited research facilities that will enable you to try something like this. Um, um, unfortunately, we're in environments where things like this are not really prioritized. Mm -hmm. So. Um, a lot of times you have to go through the route of trial and error to get mm -hmm. it right. There are no sure places that you can go to and you get the right information needed there. So I think those are the two major challenges. Um, the first being finance, which is um, mm -hmm. the same or mm -hmm. usual across all platforms. There are limited opportunities, financial opportunities around the environment. There are no financial institutions that really support. Um, there are a few, but having access to them is quite difficult. difficult. Um, as a young chap, you'll be asked to provide collateral twice, three times the amount you are requesting for. Manufacturing is no bread production. It's not something you need 5 million, 10 million for. So for huge amounts at our age, what collateral do we have to mm -hmm. give? So <clears throat> it becomes difficult. And sometimes even when it's accessible, you need loud voices to press buttons for you before you have access to them. So it becomes a challenge. When you go to the commercial banks, their interest rates are high with no little or no monetarium period. So if you are giving the loan this month from next month, you're already servicing, you're already paying the loan. You are using it for an automotive manufacturing research, um, which sometimes in five years, you're not even done. But in a month's time, you're already paying the, mm -hmm. the, the capital and the interest. 
The new to mobile is still on research and development stage, um, where we are focused on taking in investors. Um, we've been we've been pushing on making investments and getting the patient funding that will enable us get our workshops to standards um, to further produce standard vehicles. So are you telling me that are you telling me that right now that Benio to mobile is not doing mass production? No, 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 not at all. So um, that means all the RAS matters we see online about Benio to mobile, what you are saying is you are still a brand seeking investors that's right. Which, you know, to invest in African talents that has built this amazing product. That's right. So what can you, I mean, tell us about this particular phase you guys are in. You know, what would you want from people, from investors at this point? So, so basically, um, like Elia mentioned, patient funding. So um, this is us trying to tell Africans that an indigenous brand needs to be developed, mm. needs to be made. And if there are fundings made available in no time, in a few years from now, it's going to be uh, blown is going to be grown mm. to a point where it can service the need of um, the African environment. Mm. It's just like giving birth to a baby. Um, at the first stage, you need to do a lot of cleaning of the baby, and in a few years, it grows up and it becomes an adult. Mm. So this is just us telling investors that um, we are the right place. We are the next gold. You need to invest mm. your finances. What is the vision for Benny Automobile? Um, that's, that's wide. So what uh, the basic is to see that we make affordable and available vehicles designed for the African environment. Um, it hurts a lot when we see car crashes um, take the lives of so many people in them. So if you travel around, you see when there's a bus crash, it squeezes the commuters in it, and uh, the chances of survival is very little. So we want to see where Benny grows to a point where we make vehicles that um, chances of survival is as high as 90%, mm -hmm. 95%. Designed by Africans for the African environment. Yeah. Most of the vehicles we use were designed to, to protect humans at maybe 90 kilometers per hour mm -hmm. at, at low speeds. But in Africa, we we barely have regards for speed. So we, we find people driving at 120, 150, mm -hmm. and if they crash at those speeds, those vehicles were not designed to handle those crashes. Mm -hmm. So we want to see where we get to the point where our vehicles can safeguard the lives of people mm -hmm. at those high speeds. That's one of the reasons why we um, were careful about choosing the material we use in building our vehicles. Started with fiberglass, Fiberglass will be able to absorb those shocks at high speed and then shatter when these shocks becomes too much. Mm -hmm. Then with the airbags in them, it will further cushion um, the effect on the human mm -hmm. bodies um, rather than squeezing them inside as metal sheets mm -hmm. would. Um, so uh, that's one of the aspects um, we, we, we plan at seeing. It, it, it doesn't make sense when we see our raw materials being exported and then the finished goods imported to mm. us. We want to see where these values can be converted to end products. Would you, for for a you know young Nigerian who wants to pursue this path, what would be your advice to them? I would tell them start. Um, you know, one of the biggest challenges we as young Africans have is we want to have it all right before we start. It's one of the challenges that doesn't let us start at all. Um, you can have, I've, I've had young people approach me and say they want to do this, they want to do that, they don't have funding. And I will see them using an iPhone 14, iPhone 15. Mm. But they are saying they don't have a capital and all they needed was like slash the price of that phone. Um, some of them will say they don't have knowledge on how to do it while they have a smartphone. It's like the smartphone is just used for phone. Mm. They don't see it as, as an avenue to learn. Mm. Um, so I, I will advise them to just start with what they have to get what they need. Start by learning online. Start with the little finance you have to start doing what you want to do. I remember so many sacrifices I did. So you, you can't go through these trails, through these paths without making sacrifices. There are times where I had monies to buy clothes. I will sacrifice and use it to do all those there are times where I sold my phones because I needed mm. finance to achieve it. In. 
So um, just start where you can start, make sacrifices, be willing to, to try over and over until you get it right. Guys, this is to say that African entrepreneurs need African investors. That's okay, right. we need to invest in ourselves, in our human resource, in our talent. I mean, if you have Bugatti, you know, by the French, and you have other luxurious supercars by other, I mean, European countries, you know, why can't we build our own here in Africa? What Benny Automobile is doing shows that it is possible. And this is just funding from, you know, internal funding, and this is how far they've come. Right now, we need investment from you guys. Let's take Benny Automobile to where it's supposed to be all right guys so that's it for us on this one today i want you guys to please let us know what your thoughts are in the comments below if you need to reach out to benny automobile remember for investments which the you the description below you'll see details there you can reach out to okay stay safe until next time peace out